Nelson Mandela's ability to withstand the cruel racial restrictions of the apartheid and become the first democratic president of the people of South Africa changed the world's views of racial equality forever. He was the youngest of four boys and nine girls that lived off the land in the rolling hills of tribal South Africa. He spent his days fighting other boys, making toys, and listening to his father and elders' stories of war and glory, which usually consisted of an important moral lesson. In 1925, Mandela attended a primary school near Kunu, where his teacher required all of her students to have Christian names, and thus, his most commonly known name, Nelson, was born. Just two years later, at the fragile age of nine, Nelson's birth father died, and the acting king of the tribe became his guardian. As Mandela once said, my father possessed a proud rebelliousness, a stubborn sense of fairness that I recognize in myself. Mandela greatly looked up to his father, and his death left some big shoes to fill. The tribe leader knew this, and to the best of his ability, raised him to be great. Jongin Taba told stories to the young Mandela about the valor of their ancestors, which sparked Mandela's desire to one day not only change the issues of equality within his community, but the issues of equality worldwide. Mandela was later sent to Clarkbury Boarding Institute, where he was exposed to a world where being raised by the king had no relevance. Mandela then began studying for his Bachelor of Arts degree at the University College of Fort Hare. After a short attendance at his new school, Mandela was expelled for participating in a student protest. Mandela returned back to his hometown, where he was unpleasantly greeted by the town leaders and notified that if he didn't leave immediately, he would be forced into an arranged marriage. Mandela fled to escape this unwanted fate. Mandela's expulsion in 1940 was just the beginning of his soon-to-be active political career. Mandela began informally attending meetings at the African National Congress throughout 1942. Mandela enrolled for his Bachelor of Law at Wits University and in 1944 officially joined the ANC as well as co-founded the African National Congress Youth League, engaging motivated political advocates of all ages. The apartheid era of South Africa was a time of terrible segregation and racial discrimination. After being implemented as the official policy of the National Party in 1948, the apartheid controlled where someone could be born, live, go to school, work, and where they could be hospitalized and buried when they died. Only white South Africans could vote, and they received the most funding and most definitely had the best opportunities in life. 1952 marked the beginning of Mandela's political takeoff. Officially elected Transil president of the ANC, Mandela began taking defiant actions against the government. Because of this act of civil disobedience, Mandela along with 19 others were charged under the Suppression of Communism Act and sentenced to serve nine months of hard labor and suspended from the ANC and SAIC for two years. Following release from prison, Mandela put his two-year diploma in law to use, and he and Oliver Tambo established Mandela & Tambo, South Africa's very first black law firm. Although banned from attending any ANC meetings, Mandela feared for the organization's future, and devised a secretive plan known as the M-Plan that broke the organization into cells so that it would be able to operate even if forcibly prohibited. Just six months later, Mandela and 155 others were arrested and charged with treason. All of them were acquitted five years later. However, in Sharpsville, South Africa, on March 21, 1960, the killing of 69 unarmed protesters led to the official banning of the ANC, as well as the country's first state of emergency. At this time, Mandela, along with thousands of other citizens, were detained. Following his detainment, Mandela headed underground and began planning a three-day national strike against South Africa becoming a republic. Mandela established an underground military group known as Umkonto We Sizwe, or the Spear of the Nation, in 1961. Using the adopted name David Motsamai, Mandela fled South Africa for six months, getting supporters around Africa and Europe, as well as military training in Morocco and Ethiopia. While traveling back home, Mandela was arrested in a police roadblock. Nelson Mandela was charged and convicted for illegally leaving the country, as well as enticing workers to strike on August 5, 1962, and sent to Pretoria local prison. While being moved from Pretoria to Robben Island and then back again, the government invaded a secret base in Rivonia where Mandela's comrades from both the ANC and the Communist Party were arrested, and who Mandela later joined in 1963 on trial for sabotage, known as the Rivonia Trial. Facing the death penalty, Mandela prepared a moving and inspirational speech. 
I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. This speech was known as the speech from the dock, and although it gained Mandela's case international attention, including global calls to release the accused, and a vote from the United Nations to cancel the trial, the South African government proceeded with the trial, finding all the accused guilty. However, because of the immense attention worldwide, Mandela and his fellow accusees were sentenced to life imprisonment rather than the death sentence. In 1982, Mandela was moved to Polesmoor Prison, and from there was continuously admitted into hospitals and medical clinics to be treated for various health conditions. While hospitalized, the Minister of Justice, Kobe Coetzee, visited Mandela, and throughout his imprisonment, Mandela wrote to him, discussing a meeting between the apartheid government and the ANC. While in prison, Nelson utilized his knowledge and people skills and became the so-called leader of the prison inmates. Harsh guards woke Mandela up at 5.30 each morning, however, was not released from the cell until 6.45. Once released from the cell, time was assigned for the prisoners to clean out their bellies. An iron bucket with a 10-inch diameter that was used for both washing up and going to the bathroom. All of the prisoners went through a daily inspection. These inspections were cruel because even having one button undone would result in a meal loss for the future. All prisoners were put through excruciating physical labor until four. When the night came and everyone went to wash up, only ice cold water was available. The prisoners were required to go to bed by eight, but the corridors were never left completely dark so that no one would try to escape during the night. Although extended three separate offers of conditional release, Mandela declined them all. On December 7, 1988, Mandela was moved to Victor Vester Prison, where he spent the remaining 14 months of his imprisonment. On February 2, 1990, the ANC and PAC were unbanned, and just nine days later, Mandela was released from prison. Can you describe your emotions as you came out of the prison for us yesterday, and also your first impressions of the South Africa you've so far been able to see? I was uh, completely overwhelmed by the enthusiasm. Uh, it's something I did not expect. Following his release from prison, Mandela immersed himself into the work he had started almost four decades prior. That coming March, Mandela was elected Deputy President of the ANC and three years later awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. The following year, Mandela voted for the first time in his life and within the next month was elected by Parliament as the first ever President of a democratic South Africa. Mandela served from 1994 to 1999 where he stepped down after one term of presidency. From the rooftops, free at last. The fight for equality and freedom in South Africa is arguably the greatest movement for integration in the history of the world. Today, South Africa has made great strides towards racial equality with much credit to Mr. Mandela and his activism against the racial unequal policies of South Africa. The key question out of all of this is, how exactly was Nelson Mandela a turning point in history? This independent man convinced the government to abolish the apartheid laws for people in Africa. He fought in both peaceful and violent ways to give South Africans the rights that they deserved, and eventually accomplished his goal and led the whole country in a new direction. Not only did Nelson Mandela turn around the South African government, but he turned around the thought process of the entire nation, allowing Africans to have the same equality as Caucasians. This fight for equality and freedom in South Africa is arguably the greatest movement for integration in the history of the world. Nelson Mandela's view on life was that all people should have equal rights and all of humanity should be treated with respect. I greet you all in the name of peace, democracy and freedom for all.